بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد continuing on in our our study of شر السنة by Imam Babahari رحمه الله تعالى we reach the portion of the treaties where Imam Babahari said رحمه الله there are no analogies for the Sunnah this is the unwan or the title of this portion of the treaties where he said Rahimahullah Rahmatul Ali Qal May Allah have mercy upon you. Know that the Sunnah is not a matter for analogies or reasoning with examples and desires. And desires are not to be followed in it. Rather it is just a case of affirming the narrations from Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam without asking how explaining or saying why or how. Imam Babahari rahimahullah ta'ala <clears throat> he said or here bayan al-musannif rahimahullah ta'ala and the sunnata laysa fi haqiyas wal maqsood bi sunnati huna al-ma'na aqidi la ma'na furu min qawli wal fi'li wa taqreer ay ay qiyas الخالق بالمخلوق فهذا قياس باطل so this is a very important قاعده or principle that Imam Babahari uh, affirmed for us in this very fantastic treatise and in fact if we were to take our time and to study and go over this treatise we would benefit tremendously actually the ummah needs, needs this because this is the Reviving of the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Sabeel al-Mu'mineen, the path of the believers, the path of the Salaf of this Ummah, beginning with the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. So, Imam Babahari rahimahullah ta'ala, as it was explained, here he made clear, may Allah have mercy upon him, that the Sunnah, that there is no room for making analogies. And... What's meant by the sunnah here, this is imperative for us, what's meant by the sunnah here is issues of aqadi, uh, issues of aqaid. That we're talking about issues of creed. We're not talking about the sunnah with regards to what we understand to be the sunnah when we talk about uh, issues of, uh, as he says, furur fi deen, you know, masail about, you know, uh, pertaining to our fiqh ibadat or or fiqh mu'amalat. We're not talking about that kind of sunnah, but instead we're referring to aqidah, we're referring to creed. And this is what Imam Baba Hari, rahimahullah ta'ala, was referring to here. He was referring, when he made this statement, he said, uh, He said, it is not, uh, there are no analogies with regards to the sunnah. The sunnah he's referring to is what? Is regarding creed. And then, uh, بين المصنف رحمه الله تعالى لا معنى فروع من قول وفعل وتقرير. So this isn't this isn't related to those to the branches the thick branches related to statements and actions and the uh, things that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allowed or agreed with, but rather this is qiyas. The, the qiyas that he's talking about, that Imam Baba Hari is saying that is not permissible with regard to qiyas in the sunnah, is qiyas, uh, al, uh, qiyas al-khaliq bil-makhluq, is making an analogy between the creator of the heavens and earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, and his creation. And that there is no qiyas in this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes this principle, which is imperative for us to understand, and this deals with uh, this principle, if we were to practice, it would uh, make clear for uh, Ashadis, uh, Naqshbandis, and, and the various groups that have deviated, especially with regards to creed, that if we were to practice this principle, then this would make clear for us their mistakes and make clear for them their mistakes to where they would possibly if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills their guidance, uh, they, that they will come back to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and leave off those uh, various types of batil. And this is what the, the author uh, 
refers to here. So he says, Qiyas al Khalik bil Makhluk. And as we said, the Qaeda comes from the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al Kareem, one of the ayats, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Laysa kamitli shay wuhu sabiyun wuhu sabiyun basir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al Kareem, that there is nothing like him. Laysa kamitli shay, nothing like him. And he is the all-hearing and the all-seeing. And this, this uh, makes, uh, uh, affirms for us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it negates first and foremost that there's any comparison and any analogy and any tashbih or any resemblance between Allah, the Almighty, the creator of the heavens and earth, and his creation, and, and, and vice versa. It also, it, so it negates that there's any uh, re, there, there's any resemblance. And it affirms for us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does possess hearing and seeing, that those are his divine attributes, but we don't know the how. And we leave that kafiyah to Allah azza wa jal. But we know that Allah hears all things, and his hearing and sight is perfect. And he is the uh, all hearing, all seeing, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's no qiyas. بَيْنَ الْخَالِقُ وَالْمَخْلُوقِ And we'll leave off there because it's almost time to pray the Dhuhr prayer. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And we'll continue on uh, afterwards uh, with this lesson. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan.